Okay, dual throttle body setup. The hows, the whys. Uh, I've got a lot to get through. I even made a list, so let's get into it. What's up guys, it's James from Fast Thrust here. I'm just finishing up the video that you're about to watch now. I've had an idea. So I get a lot of questions asking how much power does the supercharged MX-5 make? And the bottom line is, I don't know. And that's because I got it remote tuned, which is obviously cheaper than getting it tuned on a dyno. But at the end of the day, you don't get a printout which says this is how much horsepower and torque it makes. So here's what I have done. I've set up a page over on Ko-Fi. I'll put a link to that above my head right now. Now this is a crowdfunding page. So what I'm asking is, hey, if this series, my supercharged MX-5 series has helped you build your own car, or it's given you the motivation to do the build in the future, or hey, you have just enjoyed the series. How about donating to getting my car on to a local dyno? Now I've been quoted 350 pounds plus VAT for the day, so 420 pounds total. I've set that up as a goal over on Ko-Fi. And if we can meet that, I'll take the car to the dyno and then we can end this discussion once and for all on how much power the MX-5 makes. So yeah, it would be great if you could donate to that. You don't have to, but if you want to, it's really easy. You can just use PayPal and Ko-Fi do not take a commission. So everything you donate will go into the dyno fund. Great. Thanks for that. I'll get back to the video. Right, so to understand where this all went wrong for me with the original setup, the single throttle body, we've got to go all the way back to the remote tune process. So uh, before I got it remote tuned, before I fit the supercharger, I was just driving it around naturally aspirated on the base map, which maybe you shouldn't do, but that's what I was doing. I didn't want to pay to get it tuned naturally aspirated and then have to pay for it to get tuned with the supercharger all over again. So I was driving it around on the base map. Then the day came to fit the supercharger. And when I did that, at that point, I could not drive the car around on the base map anymore. So I contacted the remote tuner who I was using, Alex Hickson, and I said, hey Alex, supercharger's on, we're ready to go, let's get this thing tuned. Now, if you don't know, the remote tuning process basically involves uh, you drive around, you make a log on, in my case, the ME221, and then you send that log off to the tuner. And he takes a look at it and he says, right, hey, okay, we can add some timing there. We can take away our ad fuel there. I, I don't pretend to know how they tune a standalone ECU, but that's what they do. They look at the log, they make adjustments. Then they send you a revised map back. You upload that map to your car, and then the process starts again. You drive it around, make a log, etc uh, etc et you do that about three or four times and then you've got a fully mapped car essentially now i got about halfway through this process and i had to phone alex and say hey i've got a problem with this car it's driving me nuts we're gonna have to pause the remote tuning process for now while i sort it out and that problem was all to do with the single throttle body and was all to do with the noise the setup was making. It was excruciatingly loud, the whine from the supercharger. I built this car as a daily driver. You know, something I could jump into on a weekend, I could drive it to work, you know, just enjoy it day to day. I couldn't do that. I mean, it, it would annoy me, or it did annoy me to death. Uh, it's not a track car. If it was a track car, you might be able to live with it. This was never meant to be a track car, even though maybe I might do the odd track day in it. But that wasn't the purpose of this car. So I was a bit, in fact, a bit is an understatement. I was a lot disheartened with it because I'd sat here and preached to you guys saying, hey, I think this is a really cheap, nice setup for an everyday driver. And it all came crumbling down around me when I realized that I couldn't drive it because it annoyed the hell out of me. Yeah, I was pretty peed off, to put it lightly. And then a couple of my friends stepped in, thanks Xander, thanks Simon, they sort of consoled me a bit and said, hey, you can fix this. You know, you just need to put a little bit more effort in and fit a second throttle body. I've missed a point here, the cost of the remote tune, because I've not gone over that. The remote tune, um, from Alex anyway, when I did it was 130 pounds. That's the base price to get it done. I paid, an extra 30 pounds because we had to stop the process and basically start it again when I fitted the second throttle body. So the remote tune for me cost 160 pounds. 
So yeah, I leaned on Xander and Simon, and Simon being the part squirrel that he is, had another supercharger fitting kit. It was a TR Lane kit, and he said, look, I've got a kit here. Uh, it allows you to use a second throttle body. Uh, you can buy it off me if you want. Now, this is where you can not make the mistake that I did, and you can choose the kit that you need to suit your purposes, because I ended up buying an entirely different kit, a full kit, even though I only wanted to use the inlet part of it. Go figure. It's not the end of the world. We are actually going to use what's left of that kit on my friend Xander's car, because he's building a track car, and we're going to get to use it on that, so it's no big deal. But anyway, the crucial thing about the TR Lane kit was it had an inlet for the supercharger that allowed me to run a second throttle body. The G19 kit, you can't do this. Now, the G19 kit, I'm not knocking it as such. It is an extremely well-made bit of kit. The brackets that you mount the supercharger to the side of the engine are excellent. I read with other kits, you can spend hours and hours getting the belt alignment right on them so it doesn't throw belts off or it doesn't wear belts on evenly. The G19 kit, literally a monkey could fit it. I bolted it on there straight away and the belt alignment was perfect. So the brackets are great, the outlet is fine, it's just the inlet which does not allow you to run a second throttle body. Right, so let's take a closer look at this thing and understand uh, what I needed to do to fit this TR Lane inlet, which actually wasn't a great deal because it was only the inlet that I was using. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this differs to the G19 one because it kicks out of the supercharger, goes 90 degrees, and then you've got a flange to mount a second throttle body. You've also got a takeoff so you can recirculate the bypass valve into the inlet after the throttle body. Now you need to do that with this kind of setup. So that's how it differs somewhat from uh, the G19 inlet, which basically dumped the bypass to atmosphere, and did not allow you to put a throttle body on it. Now, I did have to modify the throttle body to fit it onto this kit. It was, um, I bought this throttle body ages ago. Uh, it cost me less than a tenner. It's just a bog standard 1.8 throttle body like what's already on this car in the OEM position. Uh, now, I did need to modify it, like I said. So, I removed one of the throttle springs because uh, these throttle bodies are dual sprung and to keep the throttle pedal as light as possible, I removed one spring from the second throttle body. If you didn't do that, I think you'd find the throttle pedal was too heavy. As it stands now, it's obviously 50% heavier than it was before, which I can tolerate. I think that's absolutely fine. Uh, if it wasn't fine, I guess you could probably go in and remove a spring from the OEM throttle body as well to bring it perfectly stock feel to this setup. So you've got options there. So I removed one spring from the second throttle body. That was enough for me. Uh, the second thing, obviously, there's the idle control valve um, bit on the bottom of the throttle body. I needed to blank that off because I didn't want it sucking air in there. So I um, just made a blank plate out of a piece of sheet metal because that's the easiest thing to do. Put a little bit of silicon on it, bolted it on there, and now no air's getting in there. That was pretty straightforward. And then the last thing I needed to do, there's two coolant pipes that come off the throttle body. Uh, it circulates coolant around it for some reason. Obviously not needed uh, in this situation, so I just took a hacksaw and chopped them off flush with the throttle body. That was all I needed to do to the throttle body now. Uh, I did also have to change with this setup the intake piping to the supercharger because my car has ABS which makes it extremely tight in that corner there so I had to go for this flexi black pipe that I got from uh, auto silicon hoses which is just down the road from me actually quite handy so I got that basically squeezed it in there twisted it around the ABS and then shoot it straight into the front left hand corner of the engine bay and uh, located the air filter there because that's where there's a little hole in the front there for fresh air to get to the air filter so that's why I've located it down there and then the last little thing I did was this intake piping as nice as it is it's not very durable if it rubs up against something it doesn't take long to put a hole in it so where it's up against the ABS I have uh, just put a cut off from one of the silicone elbows I had uh, just around the pipe there so it doesn't rub through and that about does it for all I had to do to modify uh, this inlet oh the bypass obviously yeah I just had to buy a 90 degree piece of silicon tube to connect 
the bypass back into the inlet and that I think uh, I'm looking at my list here yes no it doesn't because the next thing I needed to do was get uh, a throttle cable run from the OEM uh, throttle body to the second throttle body so they basically open up in unison now uh, to do this there's multiple ways of doing this you can either get a auto if you have a throttle body from an automatic MX-5 they actually are built to have two throttle cables I think one of them goes to the kick down or something like that you can buy one of those uh, that works but in my case Simon stepped in again with this endless supply of parts and said hey I've got this thing called a Shapeways adapter so it's a little adapter that you drill uh, the um, what would you call it the actuator on the throttle body and then you bolt this little thing to it and it allows you to run another throttle cable so then I've got basically it's just a universal throttle cable off eBay running around the back of the engine to the second throttle body and then yeah that's basically it so they open now at the same time now what you do need to do with this setup is you need to adjust the uh, throttle body before the charger so that it's open slightly more than the stock throttle body it just sort of leads the uh, the second or the first throttle body if you know what I mean the throttle body before the charger leads the throttle body after the charger slightly by a few millimeters that's something you can play with uh, because it kind of affects how quickly it comes on boost but then you've also got the noise factor so you need to find a happy medium there of uh, how quiet it is versus how quickly it comes on boost so that's a sort of personal preference thing which you can tweak as much as you like and that takes care of it so the throttle bodies are just connected together and they open at the same time like I said one less spring in the second throttle body so the pedal feel is about 50% heavier than normal fine it works for me so that's it that's all I basically had to do to get two throttle bodies on this car and let me tell you it absolutely transformed this car and I don't say that lightly I went from absolutely is hate a strong word this really isn't I really disliked this car with a one throttle body and I fitted two throttle bodies and I took it out for a test drive and I literally drove up and down celebrating inside the car to myself like this has transformed the car this makes it drivable it is way quieter at cruise and idle obviously when you wide open throttle it's still as loud as it was before but that's fine you know the thing that really annoyed me was driving down the m62 30 miles to work listening to this thing whining away having the radio turned up full blast and still being able to hear it it was driving me nuts as i said you get the idea so two throttle bodies transformed it from a noise perspective there's also another benefit to two throttle bodies which people don't really talk about i don't think is that you've got a much more progressive uh, boost because before with one single throttle body when the supercharger's got access to all the air that it wants it's very quick to come on boost it's a difficult car to cruise with because as soon as you start to open or put your foot down you get like a surge of boost and it's very difficult to moderate that you kind of if you're cruising you find yourself coming on and off the throttle a lot because you you add a tiny bit of throttle you get loads of boost and then you're like whoa whoa that's too much and then you're off the throttle again now you can just a light bit of throttle the supercharger's throttled you open the throttle a little bit you get a little bit of boost it drives much more like a like a standard naturally aspirated car it's it's transformed it I, i'm gonna say if you are looking at doing a setup like this for anything that is not a track car you need two throttle bodies people tolerate single throttle bodies i've no idea how my experience my advice to you would be after going through this entire process do it right first time dual throttles is the way to go so um that's pretty much all that went into the setup i have sort of painted the little uh the tr lane inlet and the blank plates and stuff so it looks nice i'm really happy with it i do not intend to change the setup at all now it's just a fun little car so that's pretty much all that went into the dual throttle body setup i hope that helped you out